welcome to another episode of Vital Doc Talk. And today on the show, we have Dr. Joffrey. He's a best-selling author. Um, this guy's a high performer, guys. I can tell he gets things done, um, even with the short amount of time I've talked to him so far. Um, Dr. Joffrey, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for, for having me. I've been looking forward to being on the show for several weeks now. I, I really appreciate that. Um, and I'm glad your PR company uh, connected us. Um, so why don't you tell us a bit about your background? Okay, I am a Hampton University graduate, went on to go to uh, Harvard and train at, at Howard and was the chair and chief and, uh, of, a, of a level one trauma center, as well as I was the medical director um, during, uh, uh, for, for Washington DC during Ebola. And um, once that crisis in, ended, I found myself jumping into the entrepreneurial world. That's beautiful. And then on the entrepreneurial world, um, what have you done there so far? What I do is I teach executives how to make split second decisions. And, 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 and it's easy. You get it. I, I, I am an ER doctor. COVID's going on now, but this is not my first natural disaster. So as I was developing this framework for like teaching um that i went to katrina i was on the front lines there then i was on the front lines of h1n1 I actually ran the emergency response for ebola for 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 like washington but what that did, did it allowed me to develop the split second decisions framework so i've taken that process and created a framework for teaching executives how to make split second decisions I love that. And, you know, obviously in today's environment, that's super, super useful and uh, valuable to make these very, right, um, I guess, emergency sized decisions because we're going through craziness right now. Yeah. Um, what would your tips be for doctors out there right now who, um, you know, I guess they're trying to grow, they're trying to market themselves. What, what do you think are the best types of decisions they can make? What, what are you, you know, what's your advice? What is key is, is, Start it be, be before you're ready to, to jump into it. Meaning that while you're seeing patients, while your practice is going on, burn that midnight oil. I don't burn the, the like midnight oil. I get up early. I'm a 3.30, 4 o'clock guy, and I, and I get a few hours in that way. And um, your social media. Start to develop a social media following now about whatever. Why? Because your followers will become your customers one day somehow. And if they're not your customers, they're going to want to refer you to someone else. So start your social media following now because um, it's, it's easier to, to, to like do it slowly. I, I, I think that's really, really good advice, right? Because a lot of people have um, analysis paralysis, right? And so basically they might think about, hey, I've got to do my Twitter this way. I got to do YouTube videos that way, et cetera. And then by the time you figured it all out or even come to one decision, you could have made 20, 30 videos, yes. right? So practice, the practice is gonna naturally shine the next step. So Absolutely. That, that's great. Um, what kind of conversations have you had with, with doctors on your end, um, you know, in terms of their challenges for coronavirus? Have they all been impacted? And, and what's kind of been the best, I guess, bounce backs you've seen? Uh, so given that, well, my colleagues have been severely impacted because I, I am an ER doctor, so we're right there um, I, on, on the front lines. But what I uh, advise them, because uh, basically we make about, we all make about 35,000 decisions every day from, from the mundane, from what to wear, what to drink, what color hats I put on. And most of those decisions don't even matter. But about 1% to 2% of those are life changing and life altering. And most of those are split second decisions. Well, you say, okay, well, uh, that sounds good, but why do we even need that? Here's why, especially as it relates to like COVID. We all suffer from something called decision fatigue. Basically, as the day goes on, your brain gets tired, no matter who you are. And so mm -hmm. we've got to learn to figure out what, is, what are the high yield decisions that we have to like, make and focus on those and not on the small ones. That is gold. And I've heard that in, uh, uh, you know, coming from some of the greats in business, you know, um, billionaire Gary Keller has a book called The One Thing that I recommend. Mm -hmm. And he's, the, you know, has one of the largest real estate companies out there. And so that that's great. How do you, how does 
you know, a doctor, specifically, obviously, some of the people watching this have private practices. How do they know where to focus that early morning time to make these decisions? And well, I'm assuming, um, and this may not be true, that these are doctors who want to branch away from medicine, and, and, and they can still practice, but branch away. And the one piece of advice that I would give them is do something that they're passionate about. And I know it seems, it seems fluffy, but because you will still be seeing patients for a while, if you, if your entrepreneurial endeavor is something that you're passionate about, it will never feel like work. It, it, it will be fun to you. You're going to want to come home um, or get up early and start to tweak that process, whatever it is. And, and so the next question people ask is, how do I know what it is? I'm going to tell you how. Wake up early in the morning when the house is quiet, the kids are asleep, nothing's going on, and ask, your, ask yourself, what makes me happy? And then from there, ask more questions. And I can tell you that in that one setting, you will come up with four or five ideas that you can say, okay, let me look into those ideas. Interesting. Yeah, and our audience, um, you know, we've got all sorts of doctors that watch the show. Most of them, their their dreams probably just to keep growing their private practice. And I was talking to one yesterday, actually. She told me her dream was to grow the practice to where she could just go snowboarding the whole time, but uh, uh, which is not a bad dream. But um, I think that a, a lot of people do want to step away from maybe their main focus and then do something they're also passionate about because we have so many different passions. And that, I think they should also all connect and, you know, be your brand, et cetera. Um, and you obviously built your own brand and, you know, you've got a team behind you. What do you feel like were some of the early key decisions you made about your own brand and, and marketing messages that you think helped get you um, elevated? You know, to That is an excellent question. Very good question. And this is going to sound schizophrenic from what I said previously. But you notice about my brand, Split Second Decisions, um, it's built upon me being an ER doctor. Mm -hmm. you know, so, I, I, so I say that till I say that however you build whatever you're going to build, do not leave your primary um, professional identification. Here's why. Because as a Split Second Decisions doctor, no, reg, the regular Joe Schmo cannot say, okay, I'm going to teach split, split second decisions. Why? Because they haven't been to medical school. They haven't been to Hurricane Katrina and all that. So whatever it is, um, and, and, and there's a certain amount of, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, there's a certain amount of uh, credibility that comes with you being a doctor, no matter what field you're in. So you've got to make sure that you always move, or you always carry that with you, even if you're selling flowers. Somehow mm -hmm. tie that to being a doctor you, because mm -hmm. in this society, that's value. People recognize it means you're focused. It means that you work hard and it usually means not always that you're a good person. Uh, I like that. I, and, I, and I would agree, you know, our, our, our company's number one value is care. And that's why we like to work with doctors because uh -huh. a lot of them do care. So that's, that's awesome. Great. And so stepping away. So one thing you did, right, is you stepped away from the ER room, even, even though it wasn't a private practice, you did have to take time and write your book. And it's a, you know, it's a great book, obviously, because it's best selling. Um, what did it take to write a book like that? You know, I love to ask some of our best selling um, authors. We had Dr. Mike Ryzen on another episode. Now we got you. What do you think it takes to write a book like that? Um, what would your tips be? Um, the, the, I wrote about something that I was passionate about. And um, making decisions, split second decisions for executives. Um, I wrote that, I got up in the morning and I wrote it. And I wrote something every day. Now, now that's the most important thing that I can tell you. If you're going to write, write every day and don't edit. Because if you edit, you second think and you go back, it's, it slows you down. And so you got to get into a, a, a flow. And I would encourage people to really have a, a period of time that say, I'm going to sit down and write 500 words today, no matter what. And do it. And then, then after two weeks, you have a lot of words. Yeah, that's good. I like that advice. Um, you know, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard things like that before. And I have a friend actually who wrote a book and he edited and he told me that since he edited so much, it turned into a completely different book than when he first started. And it took him like three, four years to get it out because of that. So I, I think that is good advice. 
you know, he probably could have written a couple of books in that time. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, and, and, I, yeah. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, and, and I love to learn more, right? Anything else on, on book writing? Because I'm sure a lot of, I think every business owner and especially, you know, doctor that wants to build a brand, it's like a book nowadays, I feel like is essential, you know? So what are your other tips? I'm sure you, we could go on that for hours. But yeah, you're right. A, a book these days is basically a, a business card. But if you're going to write, don't be too hard on yourself. And unless you are a professional writer, you're going to need several editors anyways. So, mm -hmm. so don't worry about your commas and your periods. There will be several people um, who will come behind you and fix that kind of stuff. Your value is the content of your thought. And that's, that's, that's what you want to focus on. The, the, all the commas and all that kind of stuff, somebody will come back and take care of that for you. Awesome. And what would uh, um, one tip you give a doctor that wants to go out there, they want to build their own brand. What, what, would, what would one tip be for, for them? One tip in terms of, of, of uh, tell me like more. Like a takeaway, like, like, like basically, let's say a doctor's watching this, right? They, they made the decision to branch out from, um, you know, not just talking about, hey, this is me and, and I'm, you know, whatever, plastic surgeon Bob is what we'll call them, right? Let's say, hey, you know, I don't want to just do plastic surgery. I also want to talk about my own life. I want to write about my own book because I think a brand is more than just what you do, right? It's, it's, right. it's the whole picture. What would your, maybe an actionable tip for them to do out of this interview? The actual uh, tip is, and, 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 and this is key because doctors are usually high performers. They're used to, to, to being right. They're used to hitting home runs. Listen to me on this one, colleagues. And that is don't expect to hit a home run right off the bat. You have to fail your way to success. Don't get me wrong. Nobody wants to like fail, but your most successful people have had the biggest failures. Why? Because, well, well technically, if, 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 if you follow me, there's no such thing as failure. There are required lessons of success. Therefore, it's not failure. It's just a lesson. So learn the lessons you've got to learn and don't be too hard on yourself while you are learning. Oh, and set a budget. Whatever you do, start off with a budget because usually doctors have access to, to more monies. And so um, we tend to spend more. If you have a budget, stick to that budget. Yeah, no, that's, that's for sure. It's very key, right? It's return, your return on investment, as they say, is, is, is very key. I, I like that. You know, a lot of people, they should um, dive into the pool and, and they shouldn't be afraid to get started. And I think that is probably the biggest thing holding most of us back. Dr. Joffrey. So thank you so much for your interview. And where can people find you? They can uh, f catch me at YouTube at, at Dr. Stop, at, 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 at Dr. Um, Joffrey, uh, hashtag Dr. Joffrey, or they can go to splitsecondddecisions.com, splitsecondddecisions.com, or they can um, follow me on Facebook at Joffrey Mount Varner. Again, Joffrey Mount Varner. But if you follow me on um, YouTube, a lot of great information there. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. That's another episode of Vital Doc Talk. Thank you very much.